everyone, welcome back to Vibrational Attitude Creates Circumstances Reflect. One more time, Vibrational Attitude Creates and Circumstance Reflects. This is a crucial difference. It's crucial that you understand the difference and it's very important that you learn to place the emphasis on the vibrational state of your understanding of yourself, the vibrational attitude that you carry with you any given second of any given day of your life. This is important because it is precisely that vibrational attitude that generates the particular imagery, the particular configurations of energy, of reality that is drawn into your experience. In other words, the law of attraction in action. So it's crucial that we understand that there is a difference to begin with. So what's the difference? The difference is a there is the state of being or the state of consciousness, the frequency of your consciousness, the vibratory state of your attitude, of your mood, of your intention, of your sense of understanding yourself, your, your sense of who you are. That all is included in your state of being, in the frequency of your consciousness. Now, circumstances on the other end have, in a sense, no power whatsoever. They have no meaning whatsoever. They are simply reflections, giving you in a very playful manner, if you allow it to be playful, in a very playful manner, they reflect to you who you have chosen yourself to be on a vibrational level, on a belief system level, on a conviction level. Whatever you believe, you will see. Believing is seeing. This is true. This is a mechanical universal truth. Whatever you believe will be made manifest so that you can see what you believe. So the difficulty in seeing is believing is that the attitude of, okay, first I need to see it before I believe it. The difficulty in that is that it's such a paradox and it's such a loop because how it really works is that you will see what you believe so that you can actually see what you believe in. That's what it's originally here to do. Circumstances are here to reflect our vibrational attitude so that we can see what we believe. Now, if we assume that seeing is believing, in other words, first I need to see and then I'll change my beliefs, then people don't change very fast. They don't learn very fast. They don't expand a lot in this lifetime. Because what's happening is that they are of a certain vibrational attitude, they have certain beliefs. Because they have certain beliefs, they will then create certain reflections in their circumstances. In other words, what they see will be confirming what they believe. And if they then believe, as part of their belief system, that they can only change their belief if they change what is seen, if the seeing is changing, if the circumstances change, then literally what they're doing is they're taking their cue from the circumstances which are taking their cue from them, from their vibrational attitude. So circumstances take, take their cue from your beliefs. But if your belief system says that your beliefs should take their cue from your circumstances, then you're stuck in this infinite reflection loop that does not change very much. It simply doesn't budge. Because from the belief system, I won't change until I see a change. You will keep believing in the same things and therefore keep seeing the same things. And because you believe you can't change until the seeing changes, you won't change. Okay, so get out of that mindset. If you still have that mindset, drop it. It's not serving you. It's not powerful. It's not enjoyable. It's not blissful. It's not going to lead you into more of what you prefer to experience and see and enjoy here in this creation play that you've chosen to participate in. Okay, so prioritize your well-being, your joy, your bliss, your active, proactive empowerment so that you can start to generate a life that reflects your dreams, that reflects more of who you truly are on a non-physical level, on a true consciousness, higher self level, so that you can start to experience yourself more and more also in physicality, in form, in a very beautiful, expanded, accelerated fashion. Know that you can always change, that you don't have to wait for your circumstances to change because they are simply reflections of your old vibrational states of being. If you change your state of being and you maintain that state throughout the day two challenge, throughout the echo reality of your past creations, throughout the circumstances reflecting your past state of being, if you can, like I said in the three day process, maintain that new state of being throughout the day two challenge, then you will again 
flow effortlessly into the day three confirmation state, the state of confirmation, celebration, transformation. The stage that I call the day three stage. So again, please understand that the way that physical reality operates, it's nothing but a mirroring energy. It's this ocean of environmental energy that exists inside of the overall consciousness that you are. Circumstances are always generated out of your overall consciousness's energy. And shown to you, the person consciousness, as the perceiver of all this glory, so that you can learn about who you are by noticing the reflections that you've created for yourself out of your state of being. So what you attract will reflect who you are. And so this is a perfect way for creation to teach itself more about itself. So the law of attraction is not just the law of attraction, it's also the law of reflection, the law of learning. You should also ideally adopt and learn and extract learning for, and realizations from the reflections that you see in your circumstances by simply realizing that somehow they must reflect something inside of your belief system, something inside of your vibrational attitude, something inside of your vibrational mood, so that you can now learn to change that mood, learn to change that attitude, learn to change those beliefs, your conviction, your sense of self, your understanding of what is true and who you are and who you want to be. So you can liken this onto a mirror, standing in front of a mirror. If you start, say, smiling in that mirror, what will the reflection do? The reflection does not have a will of its own. Very important to realize. It's a major distinction between vibrational understanding or the vibrational attitude of your being and circumstances. The vibrational attitude of being is what dictates, is what has the free will. It is what has the power. It is what dominates. It is what exudes and gives to creation. Circumstances, on the other hand, cannot give anything. They are inherently meaningless. They are empty. They are smoke and mirrors, literally smoke and mirrors. They are empty illusions consisting of presence energy, alive presence energy, and they will shape themselves. Atoms will shape themselves in such a way as to reflect your attitude in a translation that seems physical. So your physical circumstances are the physicalized translation of your non-physical state of being, who you believe yourself to be, what your beliefs consist of, what your vibrational mood or attitude consists of, what you bring to the table, who you want to be, what you decide is true, etc. All these things will find some physical representation for themselves to reflect to you so that you can learn, so that you can wake up, so that you can make those unconscious beliefs conscious and choose whether or not they still serve you and whether or not you wish to change them or not or let go of them or not. So start appreciating circumstances, but only as an empty, meaningless, free of its own will reflection of you so that you can really empower yourself by utilizing those reflections effectively. Reflections don't have any power to create. Would you agree? In other words, when you're standing in that mirror and you're smiling, you are not smiling because the reflection is smiling. The reflection is smiling because you are smiling. Now, if you start crying in front of the mirror, the reflection will start crying because it does not have a will or existence of its own. It's only nature. It's only possibility is to reflect consciousness and state of being. So when you mind your vibrational attitude, when you start to shift that more consciously, you will start to see that the reflection will start to change because it's taking its cue from you. You should never take your cue from the circumstances. Let this one sink in. Never take your cue from your circumstances. Because again, if you do, then you're taking your cue from something that is designed to take its cue from you. So you're creating this endless loop where very little acceleration happens. So if we wish to accelerate and empower ourselves, we need to genuinely want our state of being to be the priority. We want to own our state of being, our vibrational attitude. We want to make that as happy of a space as we can. We want our vibrational attitude to be as joyful and as lighthearted and as precise and as clear and as gorgeous and as trusting and faithful and faithful in the sense that we have faith and confident space 
that we can create it to be. And when we learn to mind our vibrational attitude for 99% of the time, and for only 1% of the time, reflect back upon the reflections that is circumstances. In other words, when we start to prioritize state of being and make that our sole focus or our main focus or the main priority, that we simply want to learn to feel good, we simply want to learn to feel in alignment with who we truly are. We simply wish to be clear on who it is that we are and what it is that we desire and what it is that we are capable of. We want to be clear that we are infinite creatures, that we are vibrational beings, that we are consciousness having a state of being experience of itself, that we are choosers, that we are free agents. All these core principles of creation, that there's infinite abundance, infinite endless parallel realities, and that we are the creator, we are the chooser of those realities. We wish to experience that. We wish to keep that in mind. We wish to cultivate that. We wish to nourish that in our mind space, in our vibrational attitude space, in our state of being, in our feeling state. We wish to honor that. We wish to prioritize feeling really good and emphasize the state of being way more than we emphasize the circumstances. Because when we do that, we found the sure key to our freedom, to our empowerment, and to our ability to recreate our lives effortlessly in accordance with our higher self's true desires. And there's nothing more fulfilling than to be in a free-flowing life that becomes a complete reflection of who we truly are, knowing that the priority is always the state of being itself, the state of bliss and joy and happiness and elation itself. It doesn't even matter necessarily how that manifests, although you will enjoy the benefits and you will enjoy the changes and transformations, I guarantee you. But what you enjoy the most is the fact that now you are able to know that and, and execute that what's the most important thing in creation is that you feel absolutely in alignment, absolutely clear, absolutely good, absolutely excited, ecstatic, on top of the world, absolutely godlike and confident and convinced and in faith within your own being all the time, as much as you can. When you prioritize your vibrational attitude, the circumstances that only can reflect you will only do what they can only do, which is reflect you. So you will effortlessly change your reality if you learn to master your state of being, your vibrational attitude. So the homework for this lesson is for you to prioritize your state of being, your vibrational attitude, your feeling state, your connection state to yourself, the connection to your own source, your own higher self, your own truth. So, read, listen, or perceive this video, this recording, at least two more times in a very easeful manner where you relax and let me simply, by my talking, by my speech, by my guidance, let me guide your attention into the realization and into the motivation that what is most important and what is most valuable is that your state of being becomes the center of your attention, the center of your commitment to yourself. So after you've done that, after you've read or listened or viewed this recording a few more times, you will make a commitment to yourself and you will write this down. You will make a pact with yourself, not anything strict in terms of self-judgment or self-torture or self-discipline even, but simply you'll write a motivational, inspirational memo to yourself on paper with a pen, traditional in the old ways. You can type it out later, but just for this exercise, write it out with pen on paper. And you will write out to yourself a letter approximately this size, approximately one page of everything that you wish to honor in yourself, what you find most important, the qualities you wish to focus on, and you write it down as you would write down a pact, a commitment, a declaration of being inspired to take action in a certain way. For example, I will honor my connection to myself. I will learn to listen. I will listen, not learn to, but I will listen. I will decide to listen to my resonance above all else. I will prioritize how I feel over how my circumstances appear to indicate how I should feel. I will, da -da -da -da. I shall, I want to, I shall, I will, etc. So write it down as a statement, a powerful contract with yourself, a powerful inspirational pact, agreement with yourself. If you choose after that not to follow any of it, that's entirely up to you. But for the purpose of this homework and exercise, at least feel entirely committed to this exercise and just write down all the qualities you wish to embody and where you wish to place your emphasis based somewhat in the context of the lesson that I just shared with you all. Then feel free to type it out and 
if you feel so ready, share it with us in the study group because I think this could be highly inspirational for all the Trinfinity adepts and we're all one big family. So why not share this and why not learn from each other and why not be inspired by each other's commitments? Sometimes we don't even know that that's what we desire too until we see another portion of ourselves, another version of ourselves, another being, in other words, another adept, share their version of what they see their connection with their true source be and how they view that and how they wish to prioritize that. You can be highly inspiring to all other members of this community if you so choose. Thank you so much for considering to share. Thank you for listening to this lesson. And thank you most of all for prioritizing what you came here to be, which is all of yourself as much as you can. Full, clear, connected alignment flow with who you truly are and everything else, the reflections that are the circumstances will reflect this change. They will celebrate your truth, your vibrational attitude, always. Enjoy. You are powerful. You are infinite. You are creator.